We certainly do not condone the violence like we saw yesterday by anyone. To an extent, though, we are sympathetic to the frustrations of the protesters. But it shouldn't matter whether it was Antifa or QAnon or the Proud Boys or anyone else. What matters is that it happened and that we are all responsible. The first two letters of the U.S. Constitution spell we. They are W and E, of course. They are not R or D, as in Republican or Democrat. They are W and E, and individually, they're not worth a whole lot. But every major triumph this country has ever witnessed, from winning world wars to lunar landings, have been because of a bipartisan effort by we the people. The American political parties are like the terminals on a battery. We need both to sustain a constitutional republic. The problem is not one party or the other, as much as it is the people who lead our political parties, the establishment. Are the triumphs for this great country over? Well, it kind of feels like it after what we witnessed yesterday. At the Capitol, we heard chants of revolution in 1776. The people who chanted that and also stormed the Capitol, breaking the, into the Speaker's house while uh, we, again, understand their frustration, they certainly don't understand America. They don't understand the, what the Revolutionary War was all about. It was not a war of succession. It was a war for freedom, for liberty, for independence. It was a war fought for the right of self-determination, a war fought so a monarch thousands of miles away on the other side of the ocean couldn't dictate how we live our lives down to who we marry or who we are allowed to love. Also, anyone who is waving Robert E. Lee's Confederate flag in the halls of Congress obviously needs a history lesson, too. The Civil War was a war of succession. The election issue of 1861 was basically, is the country worth fighting for? Democrat George McClellan wanted to let the South secede, and Republican Abraham Lincoln won because he wanted to fight. And he fought to keep the Union together. The people who stormed the Capitol were trying to tear it apart. Lincoln damn near broke the Constitution trying to keep the country together, but the ends justified the means the Union held, and Lincoln, of course, ultimately paid for his political convictions with his life. Sick Semper Tyrannus, death to tyrants, that's what John Wilkes Booth shouted after he shot Lincoln. Now that young woman, that Air Force veteran named Ashley Babbitt, she also paid for her political convictions with her life. Only she has nothing to really show for it. Nothing has fundamentally changed about our government for the better as a result of what happened yesterday. We're not better for it. That's partly because far too often in our culture, whether it's the media or politicians, we jump past the why part and skip ahead to the who part, as in who's to blame. The compulsion is to blame our adversaries, our, our elected officials, when we really should be blaming ourselves. And maybe not blaming ourselves. A better way of saying that is we need to do a better job of holding ourselves accountable. Personal responsibility. That is the only way we really win the future. Now, that said, there is plenty of blame to go around. In addition to who and why, we also have to ask how. How was our capital so vulnerable? That discussion is important, too, and we'll focus on that in due time. Now, as for responsibility in the who aspect, we can blame the mob, those who scaled the walls and broke the windows, those who trespassed on federal property, and we should also hold them accountable, of course. Now, if you don't feel the same kind of anger, the righteous indignation about the people who broke through the barriers and stormed the U.S. capitals as you do about those who stormed the federal courthouse in Portland, Oregon, are you really an American? Your tax money pays for that property. How you cannot be indignant towards anyone who tries to hijack our republic is beyond me. We can also blame our elected officials, and we should. That is why we have to focus on the why part. That's why it's important. Why did this happen? Well, again, because we allowed it to happen. We sat back for decades and elected the same members of Congress who did nothing to fix the fundamental problems facing our country. Health care, immigration, border security, the finances of our country, they're all broken. They sign off on 5,000-page, $900 billion bills that no one reads except for the lobbyists that write them. We put our affection for our preferred politicians ahead of our own self-interests. The idol worship has to stop. Now, for the last 40 years, Congress, under both Democrats and Republicans, has wasted trillions of dollars on wars they never really intended to win. Congress passed dozens of symbolic resolutions and voted on dead-end legislation for personal political benefit instead of focusing on what was really better for the country. We have all watched Congress waste tens of millions of dollars on investigations and impeachment proceedings. That changed nothing. But again, we can't just blame Washington because we've allowed ourselves to be distracted by their symbolism and their petty fights and their schoolyard drama. 
We should have been more focused on our state and local officials, specifically those who control our election process. It was their sacred duty to avoid even the appearance of impropriety, and they failed. They failed in Arizona. They failed in Pennsylvania. They failed in Georgia twice. The result, tens of millions of Americans still feel disenfranchised. And for everything that happened yesterday, Trump supporters again have nothing to show for it. Joe Biden's going to be the president on January 20th. Nancy Pelosi is going to be the Speaker of the House. Chuck Schumer is going to be the Senate Majority Leader. And Vice President Kamala Harris will be the tiebreaker in the Senate. Those are the facts as the dust settles today. The voters who still feel disenfranchised are not going to get that investigation into all those voting irregularities we heard about. That was still possible until yesterday's proceedings were disrupted by that lawless mob. Senators like Kelly Leffler backed off their promises to contest the election after the violence and try and force that debate. Now, sadly, all that time and energy, all that civil disobedience of the people who did show up peacefully to air their grievances with the federal government, that was all wasted. And we can probably expect the same elected officials to use yesterday's violence now to infringe on our First Amendment rights. But it's not too late to fight back. Those who did not storm the Capitol should take heed from the other folks around the country who demonstrated peacefully at state houses and on overpasses around the country. That's where the fight for the future of our republic can still be won, on the local level. These are the people who control our elections process and ultimately determine who we send to Congress and the Senate and the White House. They are the ones who can, we can hold accountable because they don't live in Washington. They live in our communities. Change starts at home. All politics is local. So focus on your school board, your county commission, your city council, your planning and zoning boards, district attorney races, state houses, and Senate elections. This is where our attention needs to be if you really want to make America great again. This is the principle of federalism and the foundation of our republic. And unless we fix those problems on a local and state level, we're never 